Abu Hanifa was one of the Tabi'i Tabi'i. And they would say that he did not travel as much as Imam Shafi'i and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal who came later on. Because as we know, Imam Abu Hanifa died in year 150 Hijrah, while Imam Shafi'i was born in the year 150 Hijrah. So uh, Imam Abu Hanifa did not travel, did not go to Yemen, to uh, Syria, to Egypt, to Medina, to Mecca, to learn the different hadiths from the Tabi'een and Tabi'i Tabi'een who heard it from the, the, their ancestors. So his knowledge was limited compared to other uh, uh, Imams. And this is not to downsize him. He's one of the greatest Imams of all times. But he himself told us that whenever you see the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, then follow it and ignore my own opinion. Don't listen to my opinion because my opinion is based on the hadith. So if the hadith is authentic, follow it. Nowadays, the blind followers of the Hanafi school of thought don't care whether they follow the Quran, the Sunnah, or any Tom, Dick, or Harry. They are so blindly misguided only to follow their books. And if, if they see the Quran or the Sunnah going against such opinions, they are reluctant to abandon their madhab. As Muslims, we respect and honor Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal. They are all on our heads. They are the greatest scholars of Islam. But whenever they differ, we go back to the Quran and the Sunnah as Allah ordered us in the Quran. فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Whenever you dispute over an issue, return it back to Allah and to the Prophet, meaning to the Quran and to the Sunnah. 